<laughs> Hell yeah, that's shit. We be playing pool and all that shit over there. Yeah, that. You used to be good at the pool? That was my game. Shit, that's how I fed myself shit. I know that I hear a lot of OGs talk about that. Like back in the day, they used to bump Yeah, you, 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 you can walk up on Church Street and not be able to play pool. Damn. There's a pool room right on Church Church And y'all was bad. Every goddamn time you walked in there, Squeaky was in there. Damn. And Squeaky was the best pool player in the whole state. Yeah. Squeaky, you remember Squeaky? They used to take pictures. Old man Squeaky. Squeaky. Right. He ended up getting himself in trouble. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But goddamn Squeaky was a motherfucker. Ooh. That man had a, a gold stick. He used to keep carrying his case. I know they, they said that he used to trick motherfuckers. He had, he'd lose the game with time. Right, right. Make you think he wasn't shit. Take your money for three days later, shit. You know, it just, it wasn't, no, it wasn't nothing, 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 nothing nice. Man, that's what I'm talking about. But goddamn it, Lonnie, you don't made it to talking shit with Rich. Goddamn right, I'm here with Rich. What's up, world? You have now tuned in to the Talking Shit with Rich podcast show. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I just want to talk my shit. This is the show where we talk about no shit that people are scared to talk about. Got a hundred I, I, I just want to talk my talking shit. Talking shit with Rich Podcast Show. Okay. I spent a couple thousand. I, 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 I just want to talk my show. shit. Baby, this that dope money. Whole lot of tens and twenties. Got some fifties and some hundreds. Making rain where you want it. I just want to talk my shit. All right, what's up, world? Today we're going to be interviewing an E-Town legend, y'all. He go by the name of Lamo, also known as Lonnie Wilson. What's up, man? What's up there, Rich? I'm gra- I'm finally <laughs> glad we touched down. Got I'm this. telling you, nigga, you was hitting me on Facebook every other day. Yes, like, nigga, sir. I'm like, ready. To I'm, talk ready. I'm ready. Damn right. That's what's up, man. Well, it's, it's a pleasure being here with you, brother. I've been watching you since a younger, man. I, I've seen you go through ups and downs in life. The idea to you, survive, goddamn it. That's I'm it. still here, goddamn But you always kept going. Like, I never seen you just down. Even, even we we don't see some hard times, but I always seen you moving moving your feet and going to get to I, it. I'll put it to you like this, Rich. I done had three strokes and a heart attack, and I'm still Ooh, here. still here. Sitting here talking shit with Rich, goddamn <laughs> You here for a reason, not the season. That's right. That's it, man. That's a blessing, brother. You, I know you come from a big family. You know you always talk about the love of your daughters and stuff, man. So them having you still here, I know they love that. And I yeah, know they, you they, might get on their nerves you know, sometimes. They, but they, ain't they nothing trust like me out that. every day, Rich. Every that's day. it. That That's that love. That's right. that unconditional love. Yes, sir. So, man, let's go on ahead and just let the people know that don't know you know who you are. Where are you from? I'm born and raised in Evanston, Illinois. I was born in St. Francis Hospital. And what's interesting is about Evanston, Illinois, I couldn't be born in Evanston Hospital because in 1956, you could not, African Americans couldn't have babies in Evanston Hospital. It was like that? It was like that. So I had, my mother had to take me to St. Francis. She was the Damn. little sister of the first, one of the first African American patrolmen. Okay. But she couldn't have a baby at Evanston Hospital. Wow. I, you know, and, and coming from Evanston, I know, you know, it's a suburb in Chicago, y'all. And to tell a woman you can't have a baby at a certain hospital, like, golly. So so you was around, what was the, what's the name of that, the Jim Crow law? Like, well, it's not even Jim Crow. It's more, it's more redlining because okay. white folks controlled Evanston Hospital. Okay. Um, St. Francis Hospital was a little more connected to a church at church, the time, okay. and they allowed African American women to have babies there. Okay, so wow! But that that's me, still me great. and Carlos Davis was two of the first people born in and now at, 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 at St. Francis. Francis Hospital. Okay, and he's he's my first cousin, and we're, and we're both the sons of two brothers. Okay, Roosevelt Jackson and Wilson Jackson. Our, our fathers and they are brothers. I always wanted the, the connection, but you broke it down for me, and you know. Man, R.I.P. Uncle Carlos. You already know that was my uncle, yeah, that's, man. That's, that's, so, my, that's, that's my cousin. Yeah. I know y'all got some damn oh, stories well, from we, back we, in the day. We went through it, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. miss Lopes more than I miss anybody. That's it. That was the shooting night. That's the first nigga taught me how to gamble, you know? Taught me how to gamble, too. I, I lost a lot of money learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he told me the games would be sold. Sold, I, I told. Know. That's right. <laughs> 
Yeah, and so man, I you know, we just was talking about the birth of having to go to another hospital and be born. Did you like growing up in Everson, did you witness any other kind of, you know, just racism or, you know, or the separation of you black know, people to white what's people? What's very interesting about Everson is if you ride around Everson, you can tell where the black people live by looking at how the condition of the trees. Okay. Or the condition of the, the if you're looking up, it's the condition of the trees. If you're looking down, it's the condition of the curves. Okay. You can tell what the street, how is it broken up and, and battered, then it's the black community. Okay. If it's all smooth and, and, and everything is trimmed and done right, it's the white community. And ain't but one black community really yeah. in Evanston. 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 Right. And that's the fifth ward. Okay. The, part of the second ward is black, but the majority of the African Americans in Evanston were in the fifth ward. Okay. Yeah, that that makes sense. And I you know, I know that what coming from right. Everson myself, you could you could really tell the difference. And that's the thing about coming from a suburb, you know, being a being an African American, it's like, man, we went through hard times, you know, in our little circle, but then sometimes you walk a couple miles and you downtown Everston and you see the white right. people living, living large. Living large, right. So it, that makes you you know, some people like, you know, kind of maybe some of some of the brothers growing up on the south side and the west side, when you kind of just see it, you know, the struggle, it becomes like, all right, this is life. Right, right. But right. coming from a place like Evanston, you see like, man, you see, you well, see the bends, you, you see the, see the right, right. and you it's right well. across the, the street, street from Goddamn you. right. You know? And then the crazy part of it is, then what happens is there's a certain number of African Americans who made millions themselves. Okay. You know, we start having African American millionaires showing up in the sixties. Okay. You know, a couple of them were in my own family, you know. Oh, that's but that's now crazy. the difference in white wealth and black wealth. Black wealth is in their house, it's in their car, it's in the the property. Yeah. They own. White folks Material. got a million dollars in the bank. Yeah. You ain't gonna find that kind of wealth yeah. in black families. We don't. Yeah. We don't we have a million dollars. We want to show it, right? You know, I feel we like we don't wear it, right? Yeah, we went through so much of not having that. You know, we want to show, wanna that, show we that we got, got it. it, right? Yeah, and that's the thing yes. today. A nigga so will walk your, around your with car, a car, your car, a block long, <laughs> and you got four dollars in your. You pocket. know what I'm saying? There ain't no gas in <laughs> right. the tank, but the wheels <laughs> but clean. The wheels clean, right? Yeah, man. That's how we live, man. But you know that that's all. You know, part of life and, you know, what we do. Now, just just kind of getting into the nitty-gritty of things, like, growing up in Evanston, like, we talk about, you know, how we can't even really compare ourselves to the South Side and West Side too much. But when you a brother going through the struggle, it's always going to be, you know, downs, just being a black man. Well, you know, period. what's really interesting about the difference in the South Side and the West Side, the African-American community in Evanston... We suffered the same issues. We just it just hit us differently. Okay. And it's on the south side, when they drop crack, they drop truckloads of it. You know. Definitely. In Evanston you had to go to certain places, you know, like I ended up going to a party at Northwestern University, I'll never forget this. Okay. And there was a Chinese girl there okay. and she was shaking up a little bottle. Wow. And I was I asked her, What is in that bottle? She said it's ether and cocaine. Get the fuck out. So she takes the ether and the cocaine and she pours it into a handkerchief. Wow. And a little bitty ball is pops out, pops out the bottle. Damn. So of course my nosy ass. You wonder what's I wonder what's what hey, what's what's to this shit? You know, I've yeah. been smoking weed and shit. I don't know nothing about nothing. Yeah. The Chinese girl puts it in a little glass pipe and she lights it. Wow. And she puts it in my mouth. And I want you to wow. know that that's the beginning of the crack party. And I went to that goddamn party on that day, and that party lasted 40-some odd years. Ooh, I remember you told me that. I chased I that remember, goddamn yeah. feeling for the rest of my goddamn life. Yeah. Till I had two strokes and a heart attack wow. trying to fi find wow. that, that feeling again. Man, and you know what? You know, me growing up, you know, my my parents, you know, they, they was victims of the drug epidemic or right. whatever. Uh, yeah. But I always wondered what drove people from your time to actually get down and start using because we was nosy we got nosy yeah. and you st it's like it's like pandora's box okay. you open the goddamn box you look in yeah and then you find out it's a monster in that motherfucker. damn and see right right and and that you know what i got a good insight on that i was watching this show called snowfall and i'm like damn how did it, it was really just people was partying it's right. kind of like the new age like my times you know i'm an 80s baby 
And kind of when we was growing up, getting into things like around my teenage years, people was experimenting. They was more doing ecstasy. Ecstasy, yeah, ecstasy. So, you know, it was just like, man, it was kind of the thing to do. You really didn't see nobody falling out right, dying right. from it, but it was like, the thing about it, when 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 did you guys know? When did everybody know that? Hey, man, this this crack thing well, is a problem. What's crazy is about fifteen years later, you start to realize that you've been chasing a feeling that you can never get again. Okay, you only get that crack feeling one yes. time, the first right. time you smoke it. So it's a joke. Right. It's a trick. Okay. So you chase that feeling for the rest of your life. So I, I literally chased that feeling for another thirty five years yeah until i start having strokes and, yeah. and heart attacks yeah you start because it started i fucking with your it start, it start fucking with my body it had been so long but i mean physically on people like when did people every i mean that was you personally but when did everybody as a people as a community like man this new drug ain't it like this well, shit it got, is some it, fucked it, it up came, shit it came later a lot of people started to die and you know, between the alcohol, you got to understand that most of the African-American community was already strung out on alcohol. Alcohol, right. So then the alcoholics switched over to crack. Now you got a double addiction. This, who? Now you got alcoholics running around with crack pipes in their pocket, and then, then this shit got, it just got out of hand. Yeah, I get you. Then everybody starts to fall apart. The yeah. Com the community starts to lose money. Money, yeah. The white bankers in Will Met is getting rich. Rich, as we, yeah. As we falling apart. Yeah. You know, because yeah. one, one thing that people don't realize is, Somebody invested in that in that dope game. Yeah, you know that they, the story of, of, of Freeway Ricky Ross and other one. It shows you that yeah, there was money behind that that dope. That, that yeah, shit wasn't an accident. Yeah, you know, it was yeah. A, it was a plan. Yeah, it definitely was. What do you think they had a scientist like who? How do you think a first motherfucker discovered how to make that shit? Do you I don't think know. A scientist there, there's a story. There's a story about how crack was. I can't remember what it was, but. Somebody understood how it affected the human system. Okay. And then they just slid it, you know, as they do with every drug. Yeah. Let's try it out on them darkies. Yeah. And, yeah. And, then, yeah. and, and we, 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 we caught it. We got our ass kicked. Yeah. Then after we get our ass kicked, you know, of course, the, the little cool white folks, they want to find out, well, what is these Negroes doing? Doing, yeah. And then they stick their nose in it, and, and, and then yeah. you start to catch white people. So, look. That's when the problem came in. And that's when they wanted you to get rid of it. You know, that's when they wanted to get rid of right. it. When, when they people got to get got fucked, to get up, fucked up, up right Now, all of a sudden, you got little yeah. Joey. Yeah. Little Joey off of Hartzell. <laughs> he, done, he, done sold a, he done sold the artwork downstairs, and now it's a problem. Yeah. It was yeah. all right when Leroy was fucked I'm up. I'm telling you, man. It's, they, man, I just wish our people were wise enough on certain things. Well, we got to start taking we, care of ourselves. That's why I'm so glad to see you growing and getting doing this thing. Thank you, you know, man. Watching watching one of my kids grow up and be a man who's yeah. producing his own show. This shit is this man. Shit is, I appreciate that. This shit is powerful, bro. That, that's what takes me to a story like me first meeting you, man. I've all no matter what your drug addiction or whatever, brother. I've always seen you in the community helping the youth. My first time meeting you was playing in a basketball league from our hometown called Fam. Damn, right. And. <laughs> I knew you was crazy when I first met right, you. Right, that's my you, point guard. You, you you said that's my point guard. Y'all go hide him in the bathroom. Right, right. I so they so they went right. and hid me in the bathroom. And so that's how I got else. the draft. Right, there you go. Right. Yeah, I but, remember that. But even from that to 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 family focus to to y'all to y'all that don't know family focus is you know was a community center where we used to can come do homework at the school all that. Lonnie was he was right there with us. You know he. And the reason why everybody had love for, for Lamo, Lonnie, is because he, he knew how to get down to our level and talk to us. When a lot of other parents, teachers, social workers, you know, they would give it to us in a certain way. Well, they want to act like they never had nothing wrong with There you go. You it, know, they exactly. perfect. You know, yep. and I always, I always just showed them, look, I'm fuck, I done messed up yeah. more than you can. Yeah, you told us it's okay to mess up, but get your ass back up and, and go get, and and go get it. it. Right. Yeah, even when we was balling, like we used to have to get certain grades. You like, all right, all right, Jay, go hang out, go kick it, but man, get your ass home. Just get the work done. Right. So we, you can, know, we can make sure you can play. So we think. make sure you can play. If we try to win the champions. Right. We trying to kick a little ass here. We can't have you getting no D's, nigga. It, exactly, man. So how do you think things escalated, like, kind of in the black community with us going against each other? Like, from your day, we started off with fist fights. Then we went from maybe bats and locks. I'll, 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 and tell, then I'll, we tell, you what, I'll tell you what I think happened. Back in my day, the pussy 
the, the mother who really can't fight just get, takes the ass kicking and goes on about his business. <laughs> business, okay. You know what I'm saying? He He's can't just take it across the chin. T- take it across the chin, take your little ass kicking and go on home. Okay. And then all of a sudden, the guns started coming in. So now the pussy, the little sorry motherfucker, he can't take no ass kicking no more. Right. So now he got to run and go get his little thirty eight and shoot at him. Fucker, right. And then when he shoot at a motherfucker, now the person he shot at, they gonna get them a gun. Yeah. Now we got a a, a bunch of punks, cause in my in my mind, I'm 66 years old. If I could stand up, goddamn it, I'm 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 stuck in this wheelchair. But if I could stand up today, mm-hmm. and a nigga wanted to fight, yeah, we can fight. We ran lose or we draw. lose or draw, we can fight. That's I'm not it. gonna shoot you. We are gonna. Fight, you you get your two lefts in. If you fuck me up, I sit my ass back down and shut the fuck up. That's it. Man, the world would be such a beautiful place if motherfuckers thought like no, that. No, they can't take that. But you know what I think be throwing shit off? And you you said the, the power of the P-U-S-S-Y. I think, you know, women always like a bad boy or a bad guy. Right. They, so, you know, you it went from the nigga that was coming to the party, knocking motherfuckers right, out. To the but show the women, But the women... Like that. Oh, girl, right. you see Big Ray Ray right, knock right. that nigga right. out. Right. So right. now Big Ray Ray gets some pussy. So, cause, right, because, right. Then, you know. Ugly ass Ray Ray couldn't get no pussy until he knocked out about you three You know niggas. what I'm saying? So I think it just kept escalating, man. And, and, and everybody kept wanting to be the a power tough guy. The power of the pussy. That's the that's power like, of the P-U-S-S-Y. That's, that's, that's a good ass uh, uh, a theory. I like that. Yeah, because, like hey, <laughs> Lavo, I, I know you got some pussy stories. <laughs> oh, shit. So was it how how was your sex life back then? Was you was you just did you have a I'm few pretty, girls? I, I was a pretty much girls? A, I was pretty much a hoe. But okay. what what saved me, what really saved me is I had one woman, Sherelle, who was the mother of my children, okay. who stuck by me through all my hoeing. Okay. And I was a hoe, buddy. I listen. If it's yeah, well, still, you talking if, about Will Chamberlain, Magic Johnson? Listen, if it's still still like for that? five minutes, I try to stick my dick in. <laughs> so let's just be honest with it. Right. Now what was you was eating it? You was eating, eating it and, and everything. Eating it and stabbing it, all that shit. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. Put it on my face or on my dick. I was putting it on me somewhere. Just put it on me somewhere. Right, put it on me somewhere. Sit out anywhere. Right. Now I was lucky because I had a woman who stuck by me. Okay. And helped me raise my children the whole time I was home. That's right. And she raised my daughters and she took care of my business. She was at my house. I went home and ate That's every day. That's I suck. never had no hungry days. That's what sucks. Because Juanita, Sherelle Scott, goddamn it, the mother of my children was a motherfucker. Motherfucker, man. And, that, and to the, what's funny is, to this very day, we still that, are tight as a rat's ass suck. over a donut. That's if I call her right now and say, listen, Sherelle, I'm in trouble. Mm-hmm. I need, the girl would run over here and help me wipe my ass. That's what's up, And man. she's 65 years old. Yeah. But we've been together. I saw her walking down the street in front of Epson High School mm-hmm. when she was 17 years old. I saw this That's little this little, this little bitty ass waist. Ooh. Little bitty ass wasp waist and this, big said, old, got and this big old ass. I said, oh, I got to go there. <laughs> I ran down the goddamn Dodge Avenue. And, and What's your name? Boo? Yeah. Damn, that remind me. That story is crazy because it reminds me of mine. That's I I walk I met my wife t- to this day walking down Dodge. Right. Like I got to get shorty. Got to have that. And, and and that's the thing about it, Lamo. I feel like everybody in life finds that one. Right. Now you you gonna mess with multiple people. Yeah, but that that one is that one. That one that one is that one. So that's what made me make the decision that I made to get married. I never seen myself as a person really getting married. I wanted wow, to that's true. I wanted to be a whole like you the rest well, of the Well, I ain't life. never been married, but me and Sherelle have been together. We never yeah. left each other. Now I never I never said I do. But okay. I but I did but, anyway. But yeah. It just wasn't on paper, right. but y'all knew we, y'all we knew married. what it was. Right. You definitely knew what it was, man. And that's the thing about it that it, Man, you only you find that one that one man. person that that special somebody, right? Yeah, I like that. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah, definitely, man. So, man, what what point in your life just what what was your turning point in life to where you like, man, I, I got to get Lonnie together, like you know what I'm saying, like okay, I was I was still getting fucking up, getting high. I was at, working at Family Focus. Okay, and the city had a program where you get to work in the deep tunnel. Okay. And so I went to the city. I got into a program to work in the deep tunnel. Okay. And I started making real money. Now, now remember, I was at the city climbing trees. So I come out the trees. Mm-hmm. 
I go to Family Focus for a little while, I leave Family Focus, and I go into the deep tunnel. Okay. Now I'm underground, 250 feet, but they paying me. I'll never forget this. I saw this white boy from Pennsylvania. Okay. And he said, you know, you Negroes don't go down in these holes. I said, is you going? He said, yep. I said, then I'm going. Right. You did it first. Right. You did it. I followed his ass and went down. They dropped me down into this goddamn tunnel by the, on Main Street. The goddamn... Deep Tunnel was on Main Street. They dropped me down 250 feet. I started out, the hole was about as big as this building. Right. By the time they get you down to the bottom of that goddamn hole, Lloyd, it's about big as a quarter. Okay. So you're looking up, and I said, oh, Ooh, shit. shit. Did you panic? I'm way down in this motherfucker. But I said, <laughs> if this white boy can do this shit, I can do it. I can do it. Exactly. So did did you panic when you was down there? Hell yeah, yeah, I panicked. The first day I panicked, but I look, every time I saw them white boys checks, these motherfuckers, this is 1970-something. These motherfuckers is bringing home three and four thousand dollars in a week. Okay. I got to stay down here, shit. I got kids at home. I got, yeah, I don't you, give a fuck. You was fuck. doing what it took to Whatever it takes, family. I got I to gotta go back down in this hole. So I went back down that hole. Me and my brother Vance went down in that hole. Mm -hmm. And goddamn, we was laying railroad track. Okay. They got a little bitty train inside this thing that's called a, a, a Loki. Okay. And what it does is it drags the dirt. In front of the tunnel is a, what they call a tunnel bore machine. It's, okay. di it's digging. Okay. And it's dropping the dirt into a train. And your job is to build the tracks for the train so okay. the train can be pulled back and they can lift the cars out and dump the dirt. Ooh. So that's your job. Yeah. So we we look, we filling these goddamn little, little bitty ass train cars about the size of this wheelchair but a little longer. Okay. And you fill them up with dirt, and then a crane pulls them out. Okay. And they dump them and put them back in. And your job is to keep the goddamn railroad track going and to keep them goddamn wow. trains right. going. So is that, so just that job in general, you working that job, that was a point where? It made me realize that I could do anything. Okay. And once I knew I could do anything, fuck them. Now the world is mine. All right. And you could do anything you put your I mind can, to. I can you, climb trees. You had a challenge. I can, I can, like, I can counsel kids. Yeah. I can fucking dig holes. Ain't shit I can't, can't do. do. Yeah. Now I got to go. Now it's time. My kids are getting older. My daughter's getting older. Yeah. She's in Red Haven now. She got a little basketball career started. Yeah. She's starting to shake my buckets up left and right. All right. So now <laughs> I know I, I know I got to get it together. Yeah, definitely. And so that's now, what do it, man. It, it's like the motivation from, from your kids, man, it, it, it ain't nothing else better. Like, I sit around the crib, sometimes I'll be a little down, I'll be a little depressed about certain things in life, but when you see your kids walking by, running by, or coming it's up, running else. into you saying, Daddy, and let me tell they you what, believe in you. It gets, you know? it gets even better, J. Lloyd. Let me tell you uh -huh. something. I see my daughter now. Now, my daughter now is the first African-American sergeant Who? That's man, at the Everson Police Department ever, 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 ever to be. Man, I see and so that. when I see her now, this is the same little girl who used to pee on me. Man, now I used to hold her in my hand and she would pee on me. Now, <laughs> now all of a sudden she got a Glock and a goddamn <laughs> a, 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 a bulletproof vest on, man. walking around talking about man. dad. Be quiet. I'm saying, how you gonna tell me to be quiet? I'm your dad. Strong woman, right? Man. Strong as hell. She I, said, I see her. I, I've she seen said, her on Facebook. She said, she said, Dad, I, I, you know, I respect you and all, but sometimes you and that mouth get get you in trouble. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. I gotta respect that, you know, because I raised her. Yeah, yeah, yo, and, you always and, had and she don't and she don't back up, goddamn. She's me in <laughs> female. Yeah. So ain't nothing worse than arguing yeah. with Lonnie that got on a skirt. I can't do that. I, it's, <laughs> it's, it's fucked up. Yeah, man. But man, brother, that that's such a blessing, man. And I've I've heard you even talk about before, like, what you think, what what makes a stand up man? What I mean, I would say gangster, but what what makes a stand up man? Cause in my mind, a man, a man that doesn't protect his and 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 go do everything for his is not a man. Okay. See, I, I you know I was lucky enough that I myself. You know, my mother died in a fire. Okay. In 1978, the year my daughter was born, my mother died in a fire on Ashland. Wow, sorry. 1826 Ashland. And, and what's funny about it is, is that, I shouldn't say even funny, but what's strange about it is the same, my mother thought I couldn't have kids. Okay. Because I, we in my apartment, I'm living with my mother, and, and I'm fucking every day. Right. And my mother saying, ain't nobody in the world who fucking like you ain't had, ain't had no, ain't, yeah, ain't no babies yeah. come up. So, yeah. About six months later, Juanita tells me that 
Tots is about to be born. Wow. And my mother dies in a fire. Never wow. gets to see her granddaughter. Wow. And, so, I, and it just. That's something that probably messed with you. A oh, lot it messed with me. Life. Not only did it mess with me, it made me understand that I, got a, I have a responsibility yeah. to take care of this. So I can't be getting high. I can't be yeah. doing all that other dumb shit. Shit, yeah. I got to get out here and get it. Get it, yeah. You know, and that's what I did. I got out there and got it. Shit. Yeah, definitely. I always seen you going to get it, man. I, I've always seen you, like I said, even your downtimes in life. I always seen you trying and having yeah. a hustle. Well, I, because you can't spend the time crying about spilt milk. You yeah. spilt it. God damn it! Wipe it up and let's get, let's get to stepping. That's it, brother. That's it. So, man, I, I see you, you know, with you being in the wheelchair and stuff now. You know, like we talked about earlier, brother, man, you've been through a lot, but you got your mind, brother. You still able to sit up here and talk shit with me. And, like, man, we we laughing and joking, brother, like you still 21 years old. I and feel that, 21. Man, that's a blessing. The brother. only thing that's different is, like, I, damn it, I can't get up and run around the block. Shit. Yeah. So but, what do you do now? What do you do to just... Well, I got th I got a therapist that comes over, and I you know I just try to keep myself yeah balanced. You know, balanced. I, I realized that this is what this is God's this is God's story. So God yeah. wanted me to sit my ass down. Wow, that's it. So God sat me down. Now, unfortunately, there's a whole bunch of people who are sixty some odd years that are running around doing all this shit, still going to the parties, doing all that. Uh -huh. that, no, God wanted Lonnie to sit down, sit down, yeah. sit down and let's yeah. think about it. Because you shit. did a lot of running and you did a lot I, of running I, fast. I, 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 listen, I, I, they can't, you, if they keep running for another 10 years, they can't they catch can't, up exactly. with all the shit I that, did. That's what I was right. trying so, to say, So man. God said, sit down man. and I'm sitting down. That's it, bro. I got no argument. He kept me alive. Yeah. You know, I, I tell, told you a little earlier that I saw myself being put into a morgue. Yeah. They, I had my, on my last heart attack. I was at St. Francis Hospital and they was putting me in the, in the morgue. Right. And I saw the silver doors to the morgue and I said, oh, hell, hell no, y'all ain't putting me in there. Not and I heard there. my daughter my daughter behind me crying, talking about, Dad, you was dead. Well, I ain't dead now, nah, goddamn. No, nope. Take me you back to like my not today. Take me back to my room. Yep, not today. I've been up ever since. That's After it. I got out of there, I came and got this apartment five years ago and I ain't left yet. Yeah, that's And I'm so still here taking care of myself. Now I'm trying to cook with one hand and <laughs> roll around with with the wheelchair and flip. Yeah, yeah. Cheeseburgers. What you cooking up these days? Man? I'm I like, know. what's your favorite meal? Like, what's I'm your go-to? I'm an oatmeal man. That that All way right. you, you can't fuck up oatmeal. You can, man. Oatmeal always better than right. oatmeal. <laughs> goddamn right. I'm oatmeal. I'm oatmeal specialist. Goddamn. That's it, and brother. you see my mac and cheese right here. Yeah. I, I got it sitting right there. There you holding go. up the microphone. <laughs> You know we got to bootleg this shit, right. man. Right, get it together, guys. But, man, man brother, it, it's it's a pleasure and a blessing to be here talking to you. I'm man. glad you came, brother. I'm what really you glad you came. Yeah, here. man. So, you know, this this is only the beginning, man. I think, you know, I want to have you on some episodes a lot more. I want you to be I'm, I'm OG. I, I would love to be one of the OGs on this Okay. Podcast. Well, you, great you're thing. welcome many times, brother. Hey, y'all. Man, shouts out to Lonnie Wilson, y'all. I'll see you, brothers and sisters, later, y'all. E Town Legends. Let's keep talking shit with Rich, goddammit. Let's go. I just want to talk my shit. Talking shit with Rich Podcast, y'all.